Welcome to Wired Up with Mark. Today we're going to be making a low pass gate module. This is an excellent tutorial for beginners because this module won't take a lot of uh, nodes on the inside. So what we're going to do is going to start with a, we're going to the DSP section here and then get a low pass filter. Uh, the difference between a normal low pass filter and a low pass gate is that a low pass gate has such a low cutoff point that it will actually um, turn off all of the sound that's going through it. And we can see that like this. I'm going to create a VCO module, VCO tile, and a output tile. And connect to this here. Turn it down for a second. And that in there. Going to module and creating a knob. Attaching that to the alpha. And the control here is reversed and we'll unreverse it in a second. Uh, but I'll turn the volume up and you'll see now you can hear the the sound coming back in until it's unfiltered and then filtered again. So what we're going to do first is we're going to reverse this so that the control works in the opposite way. And I'm going to, I double clicked on the input there and it creates an expression node like that. It's kind of convenient. Um, you could do this on any input like this. Uh, or you can also go here to math and create an expression node. And what I'm going to do is do one minus the control. And anything you write in here becomes a variable. You can see on uh, the other side, I could do one minus X, whatever. This becomes an input. So I can take the knob and put it in there. But I'm going to do control just to be a little more explicit about what that is. It's always good to, when you can label things so that you know uh, in the future what they go to, because X is just, you know, not really very descriptive. So now you can see that we, if I turn this down, we've inverted the control. It's a little more like a normal filter where it starts at the bottom here and then goes up. Right? Now one thing I, I also don't like about the way that this is opening up is that at the very tiniest little bit you start to open really quickly in the frequencies. So um, what I want to do is to make that increase more gradual. And to do that we're going to use a, uh, another expression here. We could, we could put this all in one expression, but we're going to do this just so we can see the different stages uh, and what happens at each of these different stages. So I'm going to do um, control to um, exponent, right? And this is a little symbol that means to the power of exponent, right? So I'm going to put the control in here and I'm going to do, uh, let's say, two here. And we're going to see, a, a, let's actually do meters. Yeah, meter node, okay. And do a meter node here, so we can compare these two. And actually, let's do this one more. So now we have a meter for the knob, a meter for the inverted knob, and then a meter for this scaled knob here. So I'm going to start turning it up and you can immediately see, okay, these two are reversed from one another. They just kind of mirror each other. This one's going up while this one's going down. But after this, this one's actually, um, this one is going even faster. Right? And I, I immediately hear, oh, I, I made a mistake here. Um, what I should be doing is inverting this after I'm scaling it. So sometimes you just need to trust your ears, okay, uh, I need to do this part and then invert it, okay? So I'm gonna go back here, back here, okay? So here we go. Now, now we, we see here this, if I have it low here, then it's much lower on after, after this exponential uh, uh, operation here. And what that helps do is that it keeps the low frequencies, uh, it, keeps, it keeps the control in the low frequencies for much longer before it starts to catch up right at the top uh, with the other one. Uh, so, go here. 
See, that's much more gradual. And I can make it even more gradual by increasing this exponent here. That kind of sounds better and more musical than if I skip this, right? Immediately it turns on, right? You can hear that difference. So pay close attention. Versus this. Okay? So that's, these are two ways you can, you can scale a knob, is one here that I am scaling the the response of the knob and making it more exponential and I'm inverting it with this one. And we can actually, for a second here, this might even be worth it that I, I copy and paste this and I'm going to create an LFO so we have something repeating. I'm going to go to the wave shape saw. This will imitate just turning the knob up over and over again. And this way we can see the uh, waveform. This is the unaffected, just straight up linear response. And here is now the exponential response. You see the difference there? Okay. So it's spending much more time here in the low, as you're turning the knob up, it's still spending a much more time in the lower frequencies. And then towards the end sweep of the knob, it starts rocketing up towards the top. And then of course the inverted version just flips that around like this, right? And we just need that because of the particularity of this input, because this alpha is really a variable of a larger kind of, um, uh, what's it called, equation that, that does the filtering. So, okay, we got that now. So, we, this has a response that I like. I, I like this exponent here, um, times three. Uh, not times three, to the third power. Uh, this would be like control times control times control. It's the exact same as this. Times control times control, right? This is just a more elegant way of working that out and you can just change the exponent rather than having to write this three, three different times, okay? So another, another feature of uh, a lot of uh, low pass gates is that you, the kind of main feature of it is that you are striking it with a gate, right? That you have a gate coming in from something like a clock. So a clock. And what that does is it, it illuminates a little LED or a little light inside of the module. And this light is shining on a resistor. And this resistor is like this. this the resistor is the knob. And so when the light shines, it turns up. It turns up the knob. It turns up the you know, internal, well, it turns down the resistance, I guess, it's kind of all flipped up. But anyway, when the light shines, the cutoff goes up. And when the light turns off, the cutoff comes back down. But it comes back down in a slow decay. It doesn't just, it, it rises up really quickly and then it decays down. So for that, what we're going to do is use an envelope. So we're gonna use the, um, Let's see here, the uh, AD envelope tile, and I'll clock this waveform in here. So I'm using this tile um, because it's set up in a useful way now that no matter how long this input clock pulse is, it will still be the same exact shape. And that's the kind of behavior that we want, right? So if I have say a trigger here, and this is a little button. I'm pressing this button. You can see that I'm pressing it, but it's already gone through its, its cycle. No matter how quickly I press it, it will also go through its whole cycle. So that's, that's the kind of behavior that we want. Right? I'm gonna attach this, I'm gonna replace this knob with this envelope. Okay. So already, that's the sound of a low pass gate, right? You have uh, a filter, doesn't have any resonance. Some, some low pass gates will have some resonance, but in this one, just to keep it simple, no resonance. Uh, and it's completely blocking the sound. Okay. And what we're gonna do here 
is we're actually going to, we don't need, we're gonna pack all of this stuff inside of a module, but we only need the inside part of this. I'm just going to go inside of this, copy and paste that out, and now I'm going to redo this part because basically when I pack this together, all of this other stuff won't be accessible. We're, we're gonna have um, a fixed uh, attack and decay time and that's gonna be inside of the module, something that users can change when they go inside. But to keep it simple, we're gonna make a small version where all you're gonna have is the uh, cutoff control and this, uh, being able to ping it. So we're going to hide this inside and not waste CPU processing these lights and having all these, this extra stuff. So I'm just taking this part, the core, out of it. And again, we can go here. I'm gonna set a fixed attack time of 0.01 and a decay time, we'll experiment with this for a second, so 0 0.1, and then the time constant, we'll do one. Okay, let's see this. Let's do this a little longer. So two, three, four, five. Okay, because we're, we're um, oh yeah, I forgot we're doing it here, we, we, we are, uh, shaping the response, um, it's responding in a little different way. And now that I'm, now that I'm thinking, okay, wait, what I was trying to do with the with the knob was showing you how to 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 shape it, but this analog AD envelope is already shaped in the way that I want it to. So at this point, I can actually skip this. So I'm going to skip this part, and there, it's got the sound that I want, right? because it already has that exponential decay that I'm looking for. See? Right. And so, what, this, this time constant just means that the, um, this is out of two seconds, right? Or, uh, out of one second, so this is, this, if I had this at two, this would actually be doubled, uh, this number here. So see, you can see. So, I think that, that sounds good for the attack. Can I do a faster attack? Add a little another zero in here. Because if it's too fast, then it can sometimes it can have a clicky sound that you don't, you don't really want there, but you do want it to be really quick, or a really percussive sound. Uh, this is a part of when you're creating a module, you're sort of tuning it by ear. And, and when, when people do this, for real modules, they also do this. They sit there and they listen and they listen. Okay, how does this um, this sound? I'm gonna uh, turn this oscillator down. Okay. This this sounds pretty good to me. Um, for now, uh, what I what I want now to though is I want a cutoff um, so that I can lower the peak that it's going to with the, when it gets clocked, uh, when it gets pinged here, right? So I'm going to use a uh, expression node, and I'm gonna, well actually I can just do this, right? When, when I'm just multiplying two things together, it's kind of nice to use these product nodes because it is really explicit about what it's doing. It's just multiplying these two things together. So I'm going down to module and creating a knob and I'm gonna attach this here. And then this is the maximum cutoff that it's going to. So we can compare uh, these envelopes. So I'm increasing the level to which the envelope is rising. Okay, so that's fully on. That's lower. Sounds pretty good to me, okay. And what's cool thing with the knobs, I can go here into the inspect inspector panel, which I've had pulled up for a while here. Uh, I'm clicking on the knob, and the icon, I wanna switch it to uh, frequency, right? And so I can have, oh, not frequency, I'm gonna do cutoff. Cutoff there. And so this can give you kind of animated graphical representation of what the knob is doing. Excuse me. 
And I would leave it like this, except I know now I'm going to be putting it into this little tile form factor. And there, there's only space for this big knob if there's only this input and uh, that output on the module, right? It kind of takes up all of this space. Um, in this case, I'm going to be grouping this together in a way that I need the audio input and the strike input there. And so I'm going to have to use a little knob. And for me personally, I don't like it when, you know, the, the icon is still there, but it doesn't shrink to fit the knob. So what I'm going to do is leave the icon off. And I'm going to change this to green uh, just for some fun there. I did that right here. If I'm doing things a little too quickly, like there, just let me know in the comments if, if I need to slow down a bit. Um, I'm going to create a label for this uh, utility text and do hertz like this. And you know what? I've already probably, let me see, I've already probably done this. Whenever I've done something before, I like to just go search for it and then add it uh, because it's a little quicker that way. So I'm going to do um, the filter. Whoops, not on my user side. So yeah, right? I don't want to have to go back through this this knob and reposition that. So I know exactly where this is supposed to be. So this is going to this is going to be right where it's supposed to be. And you'll see in a second why I do that. Um, I'm gonna wrap all of this stuff that we have here into the module because this is the module itself here. I'm gonna do. Control G. And there's also a group command that'll be up here on iOS, or uh, you can copy and paste this inside of another module. But because I have things that are going to be outside of the module, it's going to automatically create inputs like this. And it's all a little mess at first, but it's okay. We can uh, start to reorganize everything. And oh, okay, so that didn't work out as, as much as I wanted to, but you know, what we're shooting for is that so that the Hertz control is inside of the knob. Um, okay, so I'm gonna want the audio to go along the bottom of the module and because I always like the main signal flow, the audio signal flow or whatever the most important signal is to the module to be on the bottom. Um, and for a second, I'm going to turn off the sound. There we go. So I'm gonna get to organizing this for the first part, I'm gonna name the module. So I'm gonna go LPG, low pass gate. And I'm going to not use these input output labels because what I'm going to do is add these um, these indicators that will go on top of them. This input uh, th th this input is always at the origin point of zero zero. Uh, so I'm going to uh, go to the expose position, and this is again in the inspector panel. Here I'm in this unlocked this build mode, uh, arrange UI mode. And I'm selecting this input, which I know is the audio input because it's already connected to the VCO. I am going to the exposed position. This is the position inside of the patch, uh, inside of the module. I want to go to the exposed position on the panel and go to zero, zero, right? That's the origin point right there. And we're going to um, also set the size of the module. So if I click on this one, we can see the size is 60 and 90. So I'm going to go size 60 and 90. And I'm going to take this and move that out of the way for a second. Uh, zero and zero, uh, th I, this is the origin point where everything starts, but I want it actually to go up 10 and 10. So 10 and 10, misspoke before. And then the um, outputs are spaced 30 apart uh, as they're going up the side of the module. So I go 10 and 40, because right? 10 plus 30 is 40. And then this side, we can, you can always check with another module, but it's 10 in from the other side. So if this is 60, then it'll be 50. And it's in line with the other one, which is 10, uh, the, the y value. So now we have the essentially the module right here, right? So where am I going to stick this in a way that looks visually okay? Maybe like that, okay? Now now I'm seeing, ooh, I kind of have a, a 
third input. Maybe when before I put this in the library as its own module, I might add a little bit more feature uh, to a little bit more features to this this tile. But for right now, just to keep it simple, I'm going to stop there. And uh, another neat way where I can do you, you can either line them up visually like this just by putting them one on top of the other. And then I'm going to move this so it's whoops, so that it's in line with that one. Or uh, again, all you have to do is click on this. Okay, this exposed position is at 50 and 74. So I go here to 50 and 74, and then that will line up exactly where with where where this knob is. And then I'll just move that until it's visually in the center. And what the only thing we're missing now for this to be a complete module is I'm going to go inside and go gate here. And I'm going to delete these because these, we don't need these. I'm going to flip this over because I like visually the control being on the top like this. It'll be a little easier to read as you're reading the patch. Okay. And for the control, the filter there input and output. I'm just very quickly rearranging things. So I'll probably do this more on the grid later that you'll see. And I have in my own little library here these input lights. So gate input light. I had that there and we need an audio. We need two audio lights. I put that where is it? There. Yeah. So there and there. And oh, we're, we're just going to match up the coordinates here. So this one's 10 and 40. So 10 and 40. This one is 10 and 10. So 10 and 10, that's already there. And this one is 50 and 10. 50 and 10. Okay, now that we go onto the model, there, there are your lights. Okay. second here. Do a little action here, random generator. Turn this knob all the way down so that we can gate it. Now that I'm hearing this, I'm thinking it's a little too long, so I'm going to turn the decay down. I might even add a decay control. And actually, there's I see now that there's space to do that. I can I can have an out uh, layout like this. So I'm gonna do that. Um, what I'm gonna do is a knob like this, and then now that's your decay control. Um, I'm going to first I'm gonna move that hertz knob over actually because it was. I copied and pasted it in that same area. Uh, there we go. Okay. And again, I'm going to go and compare these two. So this one's 10 and 74. So 10 and 74. And then this one was 50 and 74, right? So sometimes if you, you need to nudge them a little bit to get them exactly on there. Okay. Using green for that, yeah. Hearts and decay. Okay, so I'm going to add another D there. And move that over. Okay, well, there you go. 
uh, might might end up adding a little modulation input here, I don't know, but uh, I, I want to keep it simple for, like I promised in the beginning, this would be a simple tutorial how to create a low pass gate module, right? So you have a kind of strike input for the low pass gate, and you have control over how fast it decays, up to a maximum of one second. It's got a fixed attack time. And, you know, it's a nice little useful module. You can create drum type sounds with it too. Uh, we'll go over in the future about how to, you know, sculpt thing, sculpt sounds with low pass gates and make uh, different sounds with them. This is just merely to show you how to make the module. And this patch will be available uh, on the forum along with all the other patches that you see in all of these other tutorials. So thank you very much for watching. I'll leave it there for now. Um, you know, catch us on the Discord, on the forum. Uh, let me know if you have any suggestions for future tutorials, uh, things you want to see. Uh, you know, I'm happy to take requests for these uh, Wired Up with Mark uh, things. Otherwise, I'm just going to kind of do do things as ideas come to my head. I was I was looking at the uh, Eurorack new Eurorack modules coming out, and I saw how TipTop has these this collaboration with Bukla, and Bukla is really known for the low pass gate, and I saw they have a low pass gate module version that they're coming out with. I said, cool, like, you know, that's something that is is fun and easy to make in Audulous, and that's where I got the idea. Um, if you have specific things though you want me to show you, uh, I'm more than happy to, to do that for you guys. So thank, thank you very much for watching, and I will catch you on the next episode. Right, bye.